Hey guys, so we're going to install Tiny11 today, and then I'm going to tell you how it really is. So this is Windows 11 Tiny Edition. This is a port that seems to be pretty popular on the internet right now for providing a Windows experience with less fill-in and junk on it. And i got to be honest with you, from the download to the install, I don't really see any difference. Um, it doesn't appear to run any differently than regular Windows 11. It still gets all the Windows 11 updates, and while there are things removed from the operating system and the installation process, it's not any faster. If anything, it's a little buggy, it hangs a bit, and the packages that it comes with are actually removed through PowerShell, and not really anything you can't do on your own in less time in the full operating system. So I'm having a hard time understanding specifically what this operating system is for, other than maybe a proof of concept that you know how to use PowerShell commands, possibly. Because as far as I can tell, there's no difference between Windows 11's Tiny Edition and full-blown Windows 11. I, I do know that somebody had indicated on the web that the installation is smaller, but once you run all the updates, it's not. 22 and a half gigs to install an operating system is still huge, especially considering there's nothing else on this other than the operating system. I don't really know what it is exactly that the person that built this was attempting to do, but based off of what I see, kind of pointless, pretty much worthless, and a waste of time to download. All right, so now that we know that the tiny edition of Windows 11 is pretty much worthless, it's exactly the same as full load versions of Windows 11, with really no savings of any kind, let's figure out if we could actually reduce the footprint of the operating system by uninstalling things that we're not going to use. Like for instance, let's get rid of Microsoft Edge. I know that there's contention as to whether or not that's possible, but it is. All you gotta do is you gotta go to this path here, which is C, Program Files x86, Microsoft Edge application, the version of the application which will vary from one machine to the next. Then the installer. Make sure you have the setup.exe here. What you're going to do is you're going to go to PowerShell as admin. You're going to go to the same path that we have up here. And then you're going to do dot backslash setup.exe, uninstall, system level, verbose, logging, force uninstall. And I'll put the command down in the description. And then we'll hit enter. And what this will do is this will force the system to uninstall Microsoft Edge. All right, guys, so now you can see there's no more trace of Microsoft Edge on this system. It's gone. To complete it out, what you have to do is after you run that command, you have to reboot the system. When the system comes back up, you got to have to run the PowerShell command to find the application for the AppX package and then remove the AppX package. Once the package is removed, you just delete the files, folders out of the uh, program files directory that say Edge. Um, delete all the shortcuts and then Edge is gone. So now that we have Edge gone, um, let's take a look to see if there's any difference at all in our uh, utilization here. Okay, so we're using approximately 500 megs left less memory, which is actually quite a substantial increase in resources getting rid of Microsoft Edge. Let's see what else we could trim out of the system. Okay, so maybe the next step here is what we could do is we could actually remove the store because we're never going to use it and all it's doing is running in the background and takes up space and time so what you got to do is you got to find the package name uh, full name first thing you're going to do is run get app x package and then use the wildcard which is the little asterisk and then store and then the asterisk and what that'll do is that'll check to see all the names all the packages installed with the name store so there's two of them but we're going to do both of them package full name grab the package full name here and copy it just highlight it and right click then down here, we'll just type in remove dash app x package. And then hit enter. All right, so we remove the package. And we're going to do the same thing again for the full package here. So I'll remove. Enter. All right, so you can see it's gone. All right, so we've removed now both 
Microsoft Edge and the store. Let's launch Task Manager to see if we got any performance difference now. Nope, no performance difference really at all. So we've lost about 300 to 500 megs of utilized memory after a reboot um, between removing the store and removing Microsoft Edge. Let's do, uh, since we're in here already as admin, let's do a control panel. Let's go to programs. Let's turn Windows features on and off. Um, So I don't really have anything in here that I could turn off. I have PowerShell, which I need in order to run my commands. And then SMB version three, I need in order to do connections out to the world or connect to map network drives. Everything else that's in there I could remove, but it's been removed. Um, <clears throat> let's go and look in our task manager for startup apps. You can see it's already set to start up even though it's not there anymore. So clearly that's not gonna do much for us. Um, VM tools, that's fine. Uh, health which is basically your defender can't do much with that um let's see if there's anything else in here all right so we could go under services could expand services see what services we have running well we're not going to use anything with audio because this machine's virtual and i have absolutely no need for that so this is clearly not the way to do this. The best way to do this is just to go to the services console. Which is just services.msc, Microsoft Service Console. Arrange them by uh, startup, so status rather. So we're gonna check for status running. Um, and then if we go through here, we could trim as much as we want out. Um, obviously IP helper. So this is the tunnel, like six to four IPv6. Windows 11 kind of needs that to exist. Group policy client, we're not on a domain, uh, though we don't get the option to kill it. DNS client, we do want to get to the internet. Microsoft Defender, plug and play, so USB drivers. We don't have any printers on this machine. I guess we could stop the print spooler. Uh, remote access connections like VPN and stuff. We're not going to use that on here, so we can disable that. Stop that. Test schedulers used by Windows to schedule updates and things of that nature. Themes, time broker. Windows Audio, we could kill that. Okay guys, so there you go. Finished cleaning out as much as I can and rebooted the box. And we are down to 1.3 gigs of utilization to run Windows 11 operating system. So what does this prove? It does prove that if you get rid of three quarters of the operating system, all of the security, the TCP IP connection helpers, everything that is the GUI based, it'll save you about 250 megs of memory, which in my opinion is not worth it. So this kind of debunks the point of tiny Windows 11. Clearly it's pointless to use it. It doesn't really do anything over having a full blown copy of Windows 11. And at most, you're gonna save yourself maybe 700 megs of memory, maybe. And that's only if you do nothing with it because you'd have to turn off three quarters of the operating system to get to that point. So like and subscribe, guys. Hopefully this clears up what Tiny11 is and what Tiny11 is not. All right, guys, take it easy.